all you are watching simulink tutorial and today we are going to see the difference between implicit tick event temporal logic and absolute time temporal logic so in my earlier video i had explained the absolute time temporal logic so if you want to watch that video click on the link in the description below so let's start with today's video so what is implicit tick event so for example if you consider a clock of a controller or a rectangular wave of fixed frequency as shown in this graph there is on and off event after equal interval of time so this event that occurs periodically after fixed interval of time it is called clock tick event so in case of this model it is sample time of the model so after each sample time interval model equation gets updated so implicit tick event temporal logic uses this event that is sample time for the logic so in this model i have taken two charts both the charts have same logics implemented the only difference between them is the type of temporal logic so this first one uses the tick event temporal logic and this other chart it uses absolute time temporal logic so if you look at the logic so by default the state 1 is the default state so initially the output will be true and after two tick events the state 2 will become active state 1 becomes inactive and hence the output will be false and when state 2 becomes active after three tick events state 2 becomes inactive and state 1 becomes active and again output is true so this is the syntax of using implicit tick event so i want to use the after so after then in parenthesis the number of tick events comma tick and the condition is complete so this is how simple it is to write the tick event syntax so what happens in this logic is that when state 1 becomes active after two tick events that is 2 into sample time so after that duration this transition will take place and for this transition 3 into sample time so as the sample time of this model is 500 milliseconds so this first transition requires 1 second and this second transition requires 1.5 seconds now if we look at this absolute time temporal logic it is also simple state 1 state 2 in the first state output is true in the second state output is false and here also i am using after but here in parenthesis instead of tick events we are giving the exact amount of time after which i want this transition to take place so 1 second and for this one it is 1.5 seconds so go to configuration parameter you can see here the solver type is fixed and discrete start time is 0 stop time is 10 and in fixed step size that is the sample time of this model is 0.5 seconds that is 500 milliseconds okay now if i simulate this model you can see that the absolute temporal logic and the implicit tick event temporal logic both charts have same output they are in sync so we can use any one of them for this logic implementation now let's see what happens if i change the sample time of the model let's make it to 50 milliseconds so half of the earlier sample time and simulate now 
if you see the absolute time temporal logic output it is same as earlier but the implicit tick time temporal logic the output has changed now as the sample time is reduced the on off and off on transition require same number of tick events but less time so this is the disadvantage of using implicit tick event temporal logic that is if you change the sample time of the model you will get different output so use the tick event temporal logic if the logic requires the tick events to be used but if you know that the logic requires specific time duration and doesn't require the clock tick events go for the absolute time temporal logic as even if you change the sample time of the model you don't have to change the logic and let's say in future if this time duration changes as it generally happens in software development life cycle based on required calibration settings and all so in case if this time duration changes you just have to change the value of the calibration so while developing the software if you use the calibration name here you don't need to make changes in the logic but if you are using tick event and the amount of time changes then you have to make all the calculations that how many number of ticks it will require to take this transition and all that stuff so it's always better to use absolute time temporal logic so that's all for this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up and keep watching and keep learning